So it's been a bit since I sat down and did a My Hero Academia chapter review. And I apologize for the wait. I know many of you have been looking forward to it, and I just want to say firsthand, I am sorry. So, getting that out of the way, let's get right into it. This chapter, chapter 228 to be exact, because I know chapter 229 will be out in a few days. But, um, to get right into it, this latest chapter, the, the recent one that came out, is absolutely stunning. I actually just got around to reading it, so... It's pretty fresh in my mind. And I'm going to tell you right now. Twice is going through some... He's going through some stuff. Like, I... I feel bad for the man. I really feel bad for Twice because... He's honestly one of my favorite League of Villain characters. I've always loved Toga. And I do like Shigaraki. But Twice has always been fascinating to me because he's had a very unique quirk. He's also someone that had a very interesting personality because of how he's literally... A broken man. He isn't, you know, someone that is whole. He is like a split of himself. Two personalities. And so ever since his introduction, when we got that brief backstory on what kind of happened to him and why he doesn't clone himself, I've always liked his character. And it seems like with the way this arc is going, with, you know, the Meta Liberation Army versus the League of Villains, it seems like Horikoshi Sensei wants to develop the League of Villains. Give them let's say, a power-up, and kind of express how they are changing, how they're finding themselves, and how they will line up behind Shigaraki once he leads the League of Villains. So, to get right into it, twice, what makes it so disturbing for this, you know, chapter is when he stumbles upon Toga in the shed that is obviously bleeding out. She's not in good condition. For all we know, she could actually be dead. We have really no idea at this moment you know, it's sad because you see his thoughts. His thought bubbles are split, which they've always been. Ever since his introduction, he's always kind of went against himself. Like, if he says it's cold outside, he'll say it's incredibly hot. You know, his personality is always bickering. They're always going back and forth, and there really is never a consensus with the thought pattern. And in this chapter, the way the thought bubbles are shown is one that's showing just sadness, like... Just straight up like, I can't believe this. And another one that is doing acceptance. Like, denial and acceptance. That's kind of what the thought bubbles were. And it's just very tragic. And I, I felt so bad for Twice, just the way he was in conflict with himself and just looking at Toga. And this is something that honestly has been built up for a very long time. Twice and Toga's relationship is something that honestly is very endearing. It's something that has been a big part of their character since, you know, since their introduction, since they joined the League of Villains, because we know for a fact Twice has always had this connection to Toga, and Toga has always kind of been nice to him as well, especially in that moment to when his, uh, his overall mask was ripped off, and you see how Toga put it back on and helped him out many chapters ago. This is something that's demonstrated the relationship. Toga honestly does care about Twice and vice versa. And I think the reason why Toga cares so much about Twice is because he's, as an individual, is someone that respects Toga for who she is. He's someone that is fine with her being who she is, her real personality, and he will not put her down. He accepts her. And I think that's one of the reasons why Toga really cares about Twice. And that's the same for Twice. Twice is someone that has grown very dependent on Toga. He is someone that cares about Toga because she is someone that believes in him, helps him out, reassures him, and all of the League of Villains as well. But Toga essentially is one of the main pieces that keep Twice whole. And so seeing, you know, that moment when he's looking at Toga with distress in his eyes, his eyes say so much within this chapter, I was blown back, like blown away by just the quality of this chapter, what Horikoshi did. And one of the big things about this is that when you see from, uh, I think his name is Skeptic, that, that is the dude's name that is creating, like, the, uh, the artificial clones, like, anything, like, the human clones of Twice in this chapter, you know, we see that the man, when he's looking at his clones coming face to face, he's having to, uh, having to relive his past, the, you know, the trauma he experienced, and the dude explains that what Twice is going through is honestly, or what he went through, is the exact opposite of what 
Toga went through, and I kind of want to clarify that. As you know, Toga had a big moment in this arc. Two chapters focused on her, well, you know, basically expressing that she was someone that was constantly repressed, pushed down in society, and because of that, she never could really be herself. Because of how her quirk works, she was always someone that was drawn to blood, fascinated by blood, and always having to fit in. It kind of suppressed those urges. The, you know, her being like a sociopath. You know, it was kind of pushed down. And eventually, it reached to a boiling point to where she couldn't really contain herself. And obviously, she attacked, these, uh, attacked the student in her school and then eventually led her to down a road of being a villain. And that's kind of what happened to Twice, but the exact opposite happened. Twice is someone that was already in Toga's state of mind. For instance, Toga was someone that was repressed and then eventually became her true self, just didn't care anymore, while Twice was someone that started off being him true, his true self, but then lost himself and wanted to just push aside what he really is. And that's kind of the main message here, is that Twice is the exact opposite, and opposites kind of attract in a way, and I think that's one of the big messages that Horikoshi is also trying to let us know as the readers of the series. But getting back into it though, Twice is someone that willingly pushed aside his true self. He repressed what he really is, because if we go back to what his character was in the beginning before he split, he was someone that was very narcissistic. He was someone that felt like he was king. He used his ability to clone himself to position himself as king, to get anything he wanted. And eventually, because of how his clones are, they turned against him. And we don't even know if the twice we see in this series is actually the same twice, like the original. We don't know if it's a clone or not. And there's many theories about this, and I'm going to get into it. But... For now, though, he, after that happened, he kind of pushed himself away because he did not want to be that anymore because of how much it scared him. It, it really made him think, is he really him? Is he really the real twice? So that is the sad part about his history. And so seeing those clones rush him at the end of the chapter, it's him having to relive that point of his life and he's having to face it because there's nothing he really can do. He has to face it. Either he's going to become even more broken than he is or he is going to to man up and finally do what he doesn't want to do, which clone himself to be able to fight these individuals coming at him. One or the other is potentially going to happen. So let's get right into it. See, the theory right now with Twice is that his quirk probably isn't being used to its fullest extent. I'm not the first one to come up with this, so I'm not taking any credit for it. But there is a, a popular theory that Twice, because of how it's there's a potential to where he might not be the real body of Twice, is that his quirk in some circumstances could make a real copy of an individual. And when, let's say, example, okay, let's say Do Dobby is copied, okay, and Dobby has a clone. If Dobby dies, then the copy of Dobby becomes the real Dobby, okay? And that's one of the theories on Twice, is maybe the Twice that it, we see might have died, but the copy became him. And that's kind of what you could get from what Skeptic was saying in this chapter. And he was saying, like, we want to have a backup plan. If Redestro is, let's say, killed or imprisoned, we have a backup plan to where we will still have him around to be able to lead us. They're basically saying is, we want to make sure he has multiple lives, so he can constantly be our figurehead in this society. It's very important. That's a very big detail that was revealed, which kind of implies that maybe Horikoshi is setting up for, you know, Jin twice to be able to perfectly clone an individual to where they will be an exact replica in body and soul and everything. They will actually not be able to be distinguished between the clone and the real body. So yeah, that's the point I'm getting at, is there is potential here that Twice's quirk might level up, and he might be able to perfectly do that, which would be able to set up him being able to bring back Magne or whatever, I think that's how you pronounce her name. You know the character that died, that had a major impact on Twice as a person in the League of Villains, you remember when she died, and Twice was really affected, he was really upset and all that? Well, what if his ability manifests and gets stronger, and he's able to replicate her, somehow? That's the point, is there is potential here. There is potential also, if let's say Toga is technically on Death's door, she's dying, twice with his quirk, if he's able to do that, he could replicate her and bring her back, even though the real her is dead. That could be something going on there. Like, I wonder if Horikoshi is willing to go down that path or not. But okay, anything else really to get into? Um... 
One of the other big details is that within this chapter two, we have Dobby versus the Ice Guy. And I cannot be the first person to mention, but the Ice Dude looks exactly like an Ice Climber from, you know, Super Smash Brothers. If you've played Super Smash Brothers, pretty popular game. You know that the character looks, oddly enough, like an Ice Climber. Just his entire outfit, the way he's using his abilities, I'm just like, it just... It screams that. But the ability, though, of that individual, which is, he's yet to be named, I believe. I, I don't think he's been named yet. The individual is able to manipulate all ice in an area around him, which, at first glance, isn't really that strong. But in reality, it is, depending on how you can use it. And the man basically states that because of how he's had no school his entire life, he skipped school, he's spent all of his time, all of these precious hours and minutes and all that, and days, weeks, months, years, focused on, you know, improving upon his quirk, which is scary, because we know for a fact when someone really wants to focus on their quirk, given enough time, they can really achieve some powerful things, and that's one of the big fundamentals of My Hero Academia, is that, you know, quirks definitely get stronger the more you try to practice them. I mean, Togata is a perfect example of this. He's someone that spent a lot of time in his life to approve upon his quirk, his fighting style. So if this individual character is someone that spent a lot of time trying to improve his quirk and he skipped school for it, it could lead to some negative things for him as a person, but also it could really strengthen him to where he's really strong. I think one of the big things, though, that he's not going to be able to do properly is probably being able to apply his quirk in certain situations that, you know, he's never been able to actually experience, or something that has not been practiced. Like, you know, in the classes, the hero course, you have it to where the, uh, the students, they're constantly taking little, uh, trials. They're taking little tests to kind of determine different scenarios that they would be in. And because of this individual most likely spending a lot of time by himself training, he might not be good in circumstances. Certain circumstances, he might be fundamentally flawed. And he might just completely collapse as an individual because he hasn't had the proper, you know, training for that. So yeah, that's my opinion on it. So I think that's pretty much about it. Let me know your honest thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoy my content, you know, please subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like. And if you want to get notified for whenever I upload a video, please click the bell icon down below. And with that, Chibi out.